Hello curious learners. Today we are going to look at multiplying binomials. So a binomial multiplied times a binomial. A quick recap on what a binomial looks like. A binomial is any set of two monomials joined together with addition or subtraction. So here's an example, 7x plus 6y. They can't join together because they're different terms. They have they are not like terms. So they're joined together with addition, but they are permanently set in two different numbers. You can't join them together anymore. Here's another example, r minus 6s, that's a binomial. 4x squared y squared plus 9xy squared. Anytime the variable is different, you're going to have a binomial like that. All right, anytime there's two terms and they have different variables, the variables are not exactly the same, then you multi you have to separate them with addition or subtraction like that. All right. So let's look at what happens when we multiply a binomial times a binomial. I prefer to use the distributive property. That's the way that I prefer to multiply these. I'm going to teach another method in the next lesson. Um, for multiplying binomials, but this is my preferred method, is um, multiplying using the distributive property. And what the distributive property says is that everything inside the first set of parentheses gets multiplied times everything inside of the second set of parentheses. So I'll take my first number, or my first term, 3x, and I'm going to multiply that times everything inside the second set of parentheses, 7x plus 3. Then I take my second term, negative 2, and I multiply that times everything inside of the second set of parentheses. All right? And that's what I'm going to end up with, is something that looks like this. Now, this is the complicated second line that I would write out, 3x times 7x. Notice that's the first term here. Just doing this arc here, times 7x, that's there. The second part is 3x times 3, which I would write there. Notice I'm separating that by addition. Then I'm going to add negative 2 times 7x and negative 2 times 3. And again, separating each multiplication question with an addition symbol. So now I would have to multiply all that out. 3 times 7 is 21, x times x is x squared, 3x times 3 is 9x, and then negative 2 times 7x gives me negative 14x, and my last part there, negative 2 times 3 gives me my final term of negative 6. In questions like this, where you're multiplying a binomial times a binomial, what will often happen is that the middle terms, 9x and negative 14x, will be like terms. Notice they have the same variable, x. So they can actually be joined together for a more simplified final answer. 9 minus 14 gives us negative 5. So our final answer then is 21x squared minus 5x minus 6. This type of question takes a little bit of practice. So we are going to practice some more of these. Um, here's one for you to try out. Go ahead and pause the recording, try it out, and then come back and we'll take a look at how you did. So the first step for solving this, I am going to use the method um, that I showed you in the previous lesson where instead of writing out that one really long line, um, I'm just going to use arrows and sort of write them down and multiply them as I go. So I'm going to multiply 2g times 3g and that gives me 6g squared. See, I find that this is a little bit less complicated so I'm going to go ahead and use this method. Now I'm going to multiply 2g times 4 which gives me 8g. Let's move those arrows out of the way so it's not all congested in there. Now I'm going to multiply negative 1 times 3g, and write that down here, negative 3g. 
and negative 1 times positive 4, which gives me negative 4. Again, you will see in this um, statement or this um, polynomial that I've put together, the middle terms, 8g and negative 3g, are like terms, so I can join them together. Um, 8g minus 3g leaves me 5g. The first and last term remain the same. So we end up with um, that as our final trinomial statement. Time for another one. Here we go. 4a minus 7 times 5a plus 2. Go ahead, pause the recording, try this one out. Um, you'll go ahead and have an activity where you can solve this one. For the solution, I'd like to add some color for all you visual learners out there. This might help to clarify where all the pieces come from. Let's try it out. 4a times 5a gives me 20a squared. 4a times 2 gives me 8a. Negative 7 times 5a gives me negative 35a. And my final term, negative 7 times positive 2, is going to give me negative 14. So that's where all the pieces come from. Again, my middle two terms, positive 8a and negative 35a, are like terms. They have exactly the same variable, so I can join them together to get negative 27a. So my final answer is, is 20a squared minus 27a minus 14. In our next question, what we're going to do is solve this 2y minus 1 times 3y plus 1. The solution for this, we're going to follow exactly those same steps that we've done before. Practice is definitely going to make progress. 2y times 3y gives us 6y squared. 2y times 1 gives us 2y. Then we'll take the second term in the first set of parentheses, that negative 1, and we'll multiply that times negative or times positive 3y to give us negative 3y. And then negative 1 times positive 1 gives us negative 1. The middle two terms have the same exact variable. They are like terms, so we can join them together for our final answer of 6y squared minus y minus 1. Keep working at it. You're doing great. In this question, a minus 6b times a plus 8b. This one here is showing us what happens when we have the same variable in the first and second positions of each of these binomials. So you'll see right there, um, let's go ahead. Um, you can see you have an a there and an a there, and then you've got a b and a b. This is our first time working with two variables. So give that one a shot. And we'll have another colorful solution for this one. We'll color code it. a times a gives us a squared. a times 8b gives us 8ab. Negative b times a gives us negative 6ab. So negative 6b times a, negative 6ab. And negative 6b times 8b gives us negative 48b squared. Um, a common mistake when we're seeing this type of question is to forget about squaring the final variable. It's a very important step. And again, sometimes a misstep when we're first working with variables in the second position in the binomials. So keep an eye out for that. Our middle terms are again the same. They are like terms. 8ab and negative 6ab, we can join those like terms for our final answer. a squared plus 2ab minus 48b squared. One last question, one last practice question. You've made it through this lesson. You're becoming a master multiplier. This is really good. So the last question is asking you to multiply two binomials that have all completely different uh, variables with them and see what happens with that. Go ahead and complete that activity. So we multiply, and this, the steps we follow will be exactly the same. We multiply the first term 
2 times 4 is 8. A times C is AC. 2 times 5 is 10. A times D is AD. Now we'll go to our second term, negative 3B. And we're going to multiply that times 4C, which gives us th negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. B times C is BC. Our second term times our second term, negative 3B times positive 5D gives us negative 15BD. Now, the interesting thing in this, when all the variables are different, notice there are no like terms. Our first term has a variable of AC. Our second term has a variable of AD. Our third term has a variable of BC. And our fourth term has the variable of BD. Every single term has a different variable. None of these are like terms. So our final answer remains exactly the same. We can't join any terms. We can't simplify anything. And this will happen sometimes when you're multiplying um, binomial times a binomial. You will end up sometimes with terms that can't be joined together, and that's OK. All right. Um, with most of them, you'll get kind of what we had with the other ones, where you will be able to join some terms together. Um, and you'll get a trinomial at the end. Sometimes you'll end up with a longer polynomial for your end. And that is our lesson. Just a couple of things to remember. First off, you have to do everything in the first times everything in the second. That means everything in the first set of parentheses times everything in the second set of parentheses. Everything in your first binomial times everything in the second binomial. Make sure to multiply the numbers, join the variables, and add the exponents if the variables are the same. Hope that lesson was helpful for you. Curious learners, have a wonderful day.